All right, capacitance. Capacitance is a, a strange unit. Um, we can approach it from a couple different angles. Uh, one angle is purely geometric. So if you remember from a previous video clip or reading, at the most basic level, a capacitor is two plates of conducting material that are separated by some distance d. And what these plates can do is they can maintain a separation of charge when held at some potential v, which is going to be probably applied by some kind of battery or power supply. Now, when this is connected and everything is allowed to settle, what we end up with, again, is a net positive charge on one plate and whatever that net positive charge on that one plate is the other plate has the same amount of charge just opposite and it will be negative now the total amount of charge we have a let's keep my colors consistent we have a plus q on one side and we have a minus q on the other so that when the capacitor is, if it was ever shorted out here, the minus Q would go over to the plus Q and cancel out. Um, this is dictated by a few factors. If I increase the distance between those plates, so let's say I had a, I'll go back to my other color, let's say I took a distance D here and then I made it bigger. So I have some bigger D, I'll use capital D. Imagine that the positive charge is on one of these plates and the negative charge is on the other. If there's a bigger distance between them, then there's less of an effect of some kind of effect field of attraction. So what happens then is you actually can maintain less charge when you have a bigger gap because these positive charges here are going to attract these negative charges. If this distance D is closer, then each side can attract each other more and therefore more charge can be separated. So what happens is if you increase the distance between the plates you can store or separate less charge on the plates. Another factor is the area of the plates, the surface area. And so the, usually the plates have the same amount of surface area um, but the surface area of one shadowed onto the other is going to be the same so we're usually considering that the surface area of each plate is the same surface area. It sounds kind of convoluted, but it really just means we're only considering one surface area, A. And if we make that area bigger, then we can collectively store, or separate again, more charge. So the overall capacitance, I'll label it C. This is where things get really annoying, because C is also the symbol we give coulombs, which is a different quantity, is proportional to the area of the plates, or the area of each plate, divided by the distance. If the distance gets bigger, the capacitance of the capacitor gets smaller. If the area gets bigger, then the capacitance of the capacitor gets bigger. We usually, instead of writing the proportional sign, we capture this in an equation, C equals this little script, or actually Greek letter epsilon, times A over D. And so epsilon is what we call the dielectric constant. And this depends on the material. What material? The material that is in between the plates. So the material in between the plates could just be a vacuum. And that actually has its own dielectric constant. Typically what we have in between is some kind of salted cardboard that's usually used for electrolytic capacitors, maybe some kind of ceramic. It's typically some kind of insulating material with charges that can't flow like they can in a metal, but they can just merely be realigned. So what that can do is amplify the electric field in between. So a material with a bigger dielectric constant can be can effectively lead to a greater capacitance. Again, this is the area of a plate or plates, and this is the separation. So this is the, the geometric description of capacitance. Now, 
what does this mean for how much charge can actually be separated by a particular capacitor? The amount of charge that we can separate on a particular capacitor depends both on the capacitance and the voltage applied. And we can actually just come to this, the formula used from some common sense. So Q again is our symbol for charge. And we would think that that would be directly proportional to the voltage. More voltage applied to the system would mean a greater separation of charge and also directly proportional to the capacitance. And actually that is the equation. We typically say Q equals CB. So here are two equations that govern how capacitors behave. Typically what we really look at in the electrical engineering world is using it in a circuit, and this is the one, this equation, the Q equals CV, is the one we more often use than this one. This is more for designing a particular capacitor.